that I would like to discuss with you. So inshallah, if you will permit me today, I would like to use the, the inshallah, this, uh, to take this opportunity to talk, talk about this topic, which uh, this is going to be part one. And I would like inshallah to, to, to go over it inshallah more in part two. So inshallah today we will be discussing maybe two or three things, different topics. Number one, I would be like Sami Ladi in the Shaitan Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. What I would like to discuss with you, my brothers and sisters, is part of our aqidah. When you are asked, you say, I am Ahlus Sunnah. My aqidah is the aqidah of what? Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And what we do in our belief is acting upon the Quran and the Hadith. Acting upon the Quran and, and the Hadith. 
This is our Akina. So when you are asked outside, are you Shia? You say, no, I am Ahl Sunnah. This is our Akina. Now, I would like to discuss this topic with you, which is the justification for following the Sunnah. Can an individual say, you know, as for me, Quran is enough for me. I am not going to take anything beside Quran. Quran is what I know. So whatever Quran says is halal, is halal for me. And whatever Quran says is haram, is haram for me. And I am not looking anywhere else. Quran is enough for me. So this is our topic. The justification for following the sunnah. Or the proof of sunnah. Do we have to follow sunnah? When I say sunnah, do we have to follow the hadith? The proof of authority of sunnah. I'm giving you different, you know, all the same. The proof of authority of, of sunnah. Or you can say the proof of importance of sunnah i said how many things four number one the justification for following the the sunnah number two the proof of sunnah number three the proof of authority of sunnah and the proof of importance of sunnah so i repeat the question again is it okay for an individual to say the Quran is enough for me. Only the Quran is enough for me. The Quran will suffice me. It's okay for me. Now, I think I don't know if I uh, we, we, we treated the, 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 the definition of Quran with you here before. I did. Now, let's see. What is Quran? What is the definition of Quran? And what is the definition of Sunnah? When you are asked, what is Quran? What do you say? How do you answer? First, you say Al Quran Kalamullah. Quran is a, is a speech of Allah. Quran is a communication of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Munazzalu ala qalbi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Revealed into the heart of the, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Mawqul ilayna bittawatu It is transmitted to, from the Prophet sallallahu to us through a large number of people that there is no way they will all agree in a lie. I repeat. Al-Mawqul ilayna bittawatu Al-Tawatu A large number of people to agree upon something which you know there is no way all of these people let's say 5 million people to agree on a lie. To all come no way for example so it is transmitted to us from the prophet through a large number of people its recitation is a form of worship its recitation is a form of worship this is a short definition i'll give you and i'll repeat when you are asked what is al-quran you say al-quran kalamullah Quran is the speech of Allah. Al Munazzal ala qalbi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Revealed into the heart of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi. Al Mawkul ilayna bi tawatul. Transmitted to us from the Prophet through a large group or a large number of people that is impossible for them to agree in a lie. Each recitation is a form of worship. So this is Al Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Shu'ara, Wa inna hu la tanzilu rabbil alameen. And surely, this is a revelation from the Lord of the universe. 
وإنه لتنزيل رب العالمين نزل به الروح الأمين The faithful Jibreel has descended with it meaning Jibreel was the one who took it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala qalbik litakuna min al-munthirin upon your heart so that you may be a warner you may be among the warners so Quran was taken first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Jibreel to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now we know what is Al-Quran now what is Hadith what is Sunnah Sunnah you say ma nukila anin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min qawlin aw fi'lin aw takririn meaning what was transmitted from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of his talk or speech aw fi'lin or his actions aw takrir or his silence or approval I repeat what is sunnah ما أضيف أو ما نقل عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من قول أو فعل أو تقرير أو صفة أو وصف يعني what was transmitted from the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم of his words or his talk or his speech our feeling or his actions our takreen or his approval why we say our, our his approval or his silence because when something happened and he is present and he did not say anything that means he approves that thing because he sallallahu alayhi wasallam never keeps quiet on something that is haram so it is if, if it happened in his presence and he did not say anything he kept silent sallallahu alayhi wasallam then that means he approved it otherwise he will say no he will talk about it so this is sunnah so this is telling us that we have three types of what sunnah right what are they number one he speaks sallallahu alayhi wasallam number two his actions number three yes this is sunnah now my dear brothers and sisters after knowing the definition of quran you know the sunnah the question is again can you do without sunnah can you say okay i'm taking only quran without sunnah can you say i'm going to act only upon what the quran says this is inshallah a question now if we understand the first definition we will understand and believe that quran is a revelation it is what a revelation from who allah through jibreel to our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so if i tell you do you know that the authentic sunnah is also a revelation from allah Yes. This is our aqidah. Aqidah to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Remember that. I'm going very slow because I want you to note it very well. So wherever you go, you know who you are. And you know your aqidah. So no one will come and try to, 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 to brainwash you. No one will try to come and confuse you. No, because you know your way up you know your deen you know your religion and you know who you are you know your aqidah because some of this is if we don't talk about it yes you know you are a muslim someone can you know i'm a muslim too but maybe you do this or that you know you can do this or that you don't know 
you see a person as a Muslim, but is that thing approved? It is, is, it, is it authentic? You should know that. As a seeker of knowledge. Now, I say, do you know that the authentic sunnah, the authentic hadith is also a revelation from Allah through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Someone may ask, how? The answer is, let's go to Surah Al-Najm. Allah said, if you keep the definition of sunnah, then listen to Surah Al-Najm. Allah said, وَالنَّجِمِ إِذَا هَوَى I swear by the stars when it goes down. مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى Your companion Muhammad did not go astray. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى And he never speaks of his desire. What is he telling you? Meaning whatever comes from him, Allah said, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Whatever comes out from him is a revelation revealed. I repeat, I'm going slow. The sunnah is also a revelation. From Allah to the Prophet Allah said, before Allah says this, before he, he said, he, he swore, he said, I swear by the stars when it goes down. The question, Allah is the truth. And whatever he says is the truth. But subhanAllah, sometimes you will see Allah swearing. To let mankind know or the human being knows that this thing that I'm telling you is very important and is serious. He doesn't need to, to swear Allah. No. He is Allah. He is al -Hak. He is the truth. Do you know? Because he is the truth, that's why the, the sky is standing without a pillar. Because Allah is the truth. That's why this sky you see up there is standing before well, without a pillar. That it will not collapse. It will not fall upon you. Because Allah is al haqq the truth. So, whatever he says is the, is the truth. Whatever Allah says is the, is the truth. But here Allah is swearing. He said, when najimi idha hawa, I swear by the stars when it goes down. Ma dalla sahibukum wa ma ghawa. Your companion Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not go astray. Wa ma yamutiku anil hawa. And he never speaks of his desire. Whatever comes from him, in huwa illa wahyun yuha whatever comes from him is a revelation revealed so the quran is a revelation and the sun the authentic sunnah is also what a revelation but the quran you recite it in what in your prayer do you recite the sunnah in your prayer no that's why if you know the definition of the Quran and the Sunnah, you will understand they are both from the same place. He says, why? Because Allah sent him to lead you and I out of darkness to light. His actions, because Allah said we have a good example in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So his actions and his approval are all revelations. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ala wa inni uti to the kitab wa mithlahu ma'a." He said, "I have been given the Quran and something like it." You hear what he said? He said, "I have been given the Quran and something like it." Ala yushiku rajul rajul shaban. Ala alikati yakulu alaykum bihad al Quran. He said, Yet a time is coming when a man, someone will just sit on his on his couch, recline on his couch because he's belly full. He said to people, you know what, hey, whatever you see in the Quran is enough for you. Subhanallah. 
Look, when did the Prophet Sallallahu say that? When did he say that? He said that thousand years ago. Now it's happening. Because we have some people who say we are only dealing with Quran. No Sunnah. No Hadith. So this is the peop these people when you meet them Salaman Salama. Okay? Tell them as for you, as for me, I am following the Quran and and the Sunnah. Now the Prophet said the person we will be you know belly full, you know. Climbing on his on, on his on, on, on his couch, saying to people, Quran is enough for you. فَمَا وَجَدْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ حَلَالٍ فَأَهِلُّوا وَمَا وَجَدْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ حَرَامٍ فَحَرِّمُوا He said to them, whatever you find in it to be permissible, treat it as permissible. And whenever, whatever you find in it that is prohibited, treat it as what? Prohibited. The Quran is enough for you. Listen to the Prophet. He said, وَإِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ The Prophet said, listen, listen. What Allah's messenger has prohibited is like what Allah has prohibited. So whatever you find in the hadith, authentic hadith, that is a command, it is the same as Allah's command. Whatever you find in the hadith, that is prohibition, it is the same with Allah. That, 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 that thing is what? It's a prohibition because the Prophet never speaks of his desire. That's what he said. He said, whatever I say is haram, is haram. Whatever I say is halal, is halal. So with this, we are following the Quran and the Sunnah. So now, please, I want to hear all of you. Now, when you are asked, please, what is your aqidah? You say aqidah to what? I can't hear you. I want you to say it loud. Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah. One more time. What we do, we follow the Quran and the Sunnah of our brother Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Wa ma ataqum al-Rasul fakhudhu." Allah is telling you and I to follow and obey whatever. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam brought. Meaning, whatever is brought by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam should be what? Should be accepted. فَخُذُوهُ Take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever he sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, no, refrain from it. Stay away from it. Whatever he prohibits, you stay away from that thing. So you see, there is a command in the Quran that we should follow the Sunnah. The Quran itself, the Quran is directing you to Sunnah that you should follow the Sunnah. Let's take more examples in the Quran. Allah said in Surah Ali Ibrahim, Kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. Allah said, Oh, my messenger, tell them if indeed you love Allah, then obey me, Allah will love you. Allah is saying that if truly we love Allah, then we should obey the Prophet Muhammad. Allah will love us. So, this is a proof from the Quran that we should obey, that we should follow the Sunnah. Another one, Allah said. In Surah Al-Nisa, "May you take a Rasul, for God Allah. He who obeys the Prophet has indeed obeyed Allah." You hear that? Look at the connection. He who obeys the Prophet has indeed obeyed who? Allah. So he who obeys the Sunnah has obeyed what? Al Quran. So if you obey the sunnah, the authentic sunnah, is just as you obeying what? The Quran. 
Because Allah said, if you obey the Prophet, it's as if you have obeyed who? Faqad ata Allah. Whoever obeys the Prophet has obeyed, has indeed obeyed Allah. Allah said again, in certain misal, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, ati Allah, obey Allah, wa ati ul rasul, and obey the messenger, wa ulul am, wa ulul amri minkum, and the people, and those in authority, from among you. Listen to this. Fa in tanaza'atum fi shay'in farudduhu ila Allahi wa rasul. I want you to hold this, this, this carefully here. This, this part here. Certain Nisa Ayah 59. He said, O you who believe, Ati'ullah. Please listen to carefully. Ati'ullah. Obey Allah. Wa Ati'ul Rasul. And obey the messenger. Wa ulul amri minkum. And those, the people of authority among you. Fa in tanaza'atum fi shay'in. Fi shay'in. If you dispute over any matter, if something is not clear to you, if you dispute over any over any matter, for duhu ilallah wa rasul, refer it to Allah and the Messenger. This is this this ayat is enough as a proof of what sunnah. If you have any dispute, you do not agree on something, refer it to Allah and His Messenger. Listen to Allah. In kuntum tu'minuna billah. If indeed you believe in Allah. So he who believes in Allah will always believe in the Quran and who? The Sunnah. You will believe in both. فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَعْوِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said again سُكْرَ أَمْفَالِ Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu istajibu lillah O you who believe Istajibu lillah Answer to the call of Allah Walil rasul And the call of the messenger Listen Allah mentioned two names Allah and the messenger But listen Iza da'akum When he calls you Who is that? The messenger Allah did not say When they both call you but he said what? When he calls you to that which will give you life. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ To that which will give you life. So we have Quran and Sunnah. Allah said obey the Quran and obey the authentic Sunnah. Like I said, this is the part one of this topic. I have a lot to say here. And I will go deeper as we keep going, inshallah, maybe the part two or the part three. But this is something I would like to, to, to discuss with you, you know, to, 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 to give you, inshallah, deep understanding of it so that no one, nobody can, you know, confuse you when it comes to your aqidah, when it comes to your deen. Let me give you an example. If a person comes right now, a sister comes to the masjid. She said, I want to accept Islam. And you say to her, Say, La ilaha illallah. She said, Oh, I believe in that. La ilaha illallah. Say, Muhammad Rasulullah. She said, mm, As for that, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Are you going to declare her as a Muslim? Because her shahada is what? Incomplete. It's not complete. So the completion of the shahada is Muhammadun Rasulullah. So la ilaha illallah al-Quran. Muhammadun Rasulullah, your sunnah. That's it. So our aqidah, I will keep repeating because I want it to be ringing in your ear. In your ear all the time. I am Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. I follow the Quran and the sunnah. Quran and the sunnah. And as we keep going, our culture and the ijma will come to that. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "We should answer to the call of Allah 
and answer the call of the Prophet Sallallahu whenever he calls us to that which will give us what? Life. With this short or brief introduction of this topic, you will understand that Sunnah is the second primary source of Islamic law. Of course, 100%. Sunnah is the second primary what? Source of Islamic law. Allah said in Surah Al Jumu'ah, "Who are the ones who 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 Allah, He is the one who has raised among the unlettered people among the unlettered people those who couldn't read they couldn't read and write or write among the unlettered people a messenger Rasula, a messenger mean whom from among them yet slew alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim he is reciting to them his signs where he is a key and purifying them. Where you alimu hum al kitaba wal hikmah and he is teaching them al kitaba, the book. If they say the book, what comes in, what, what, what comes in your mind? Al Quran. Wal hikmah and wisdom. Here, the translators of the Quran, they say al hikmah, wisdom here means sunnah. The wisdom here means what? Sunnah. Again, Allah says to the وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Allah said to the wives of our mothers, Ummahatul Mu'minin, He said to them, وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Muhammad Shahid here, he said, Allah said to them, and remember that which is recited unto you in your homes from the communications, meaning from the Quran and wisdom. The wisdom here is hadith. That's why we get hadith from our mother Aisha. The Prophet used to do this, he used to do that, he used to do this, he used to do that. Which part of the Sunnah will you put that? If our mother Aisha radiallahu anha says to you, the Prophet used to do this, he used to do that. Which part of the three groups of Sunnah will you put that? Actions. actions. Sunnah fi'liya, his actions. So Allah said, وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُتُكِنَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And the wisdom, that's why we many hadith from them. How he used to live with his wife sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is an example that we should all take. If you are a husband here, live like him. Try. Your wives will love you. No, I'm serious. Your wife will love you. Even if she's mad at you, she still loves you. Huh? Your wife. No, I'm talking to everybody. I said. <laughs> No, they, they will love you. Your wife will love you. If you act like him in the house, she will. She will. Like I said, even if she's mad at you, she still loves you. You know, sometimes they will be mad sometimes, you know. But if you know how to do how, how, how to take care of them, they are so sweet. But if you don't know, there's a problem. There's a problem. So we learn how to live with our wives through what? the actions of the Prophet Sallallahu as he lived with them. Okay, let me not, let me stay on the topic. Let me stay. <laughs> you know. So, Allah said, وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُتِ كُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ so now, we understand that you can never separate. 
and you can never come between the Quran and the and the Sunnah. You can never do that. Why? If a person says Quran is enough for me and Quran will suffice me, there is a problem here. What is the problem? Quran sometimes says things that the Sunnah will come and explain. Quran says things that you and I will not understand, but when we go to the Sunnah, the one who the Quran was sent to will reveal, will, will, will explain it to us. And this is a proof in the Quran. Allah said in Surah Al Nahl, Wa anzalna ilayka dhikra li tubayyina li nasi ma nuzila ilayhim. And we have revealed unto you a dhikr, the reminder, meaning the Quran. Because this is one of the names of Quran. One of the names of Quran is what? A dhikr. So Allah said, Wa anzalna ilayka dhikra li tubayyina li nasi ma nuzila ilayhim. Wa la allahum yatafakkaroon. Allah said, we have revealed to you a dhikr, a reminder. Listen to this. So that you may explain to people that which has been revealed to them. So what is explaining what has been revealed to us? What is that? What is explaining that which has been revealed to us? Sunnah. Sunnah. So, the Sunnah is explaining to us what the Quran says, what it means, because he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, knows the Quran more than what. That's why, when he told his companion, who was that? The Prophet said, "Read to me. I want to hear you reciting Quran." Who was that? Who remember? Oh, I don't have my candy today. Uh, who? The Prophet said to him, come and read, recite Quran to me. And he said to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah. You want me to recite Quran to you and you are the one who it was revealed to? Meaning you know the Quran more than all of us. Who was that? Who was that? Please. Yes, man, man, man. And when he was reading, he said, I was reading Surah Al Nisa. When I read, when I read, when I reached the scene of Allah, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَأَصَابُوا الرَّسُولَ لَهُمْ تَسَوَّى بِهِمُ الْأَمْرُ وَلَا يَكْتُمُونَ اللَّهَ حَدِيثًا He said, when I reached this place, I raised my eye, head, looking at the Prophet, I saw him crying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said to me, Hasbuk, Hasbuk, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Who was that? Yes. Ibn Mas'ud. May Allah bless you. Ibn Mas'ud. So, Allah said he sent, he revealed the Quran to him to explain to us what Allah has revealed. So brothers, Ijma' When I say Ijma' Muslim from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till today they all agree that Sunnah is the second source of Islamic law. Let's take examples quickly. We said you cannot do it well without the Sunnah. You have to take both Al-Quran and Sunnah. And this is our Aqeedah the Aqeelah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Aqeelah to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Now, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَقِيمُ salah And pray. And you know Allah emphasized on prayer many places in the Quran. And the first thing that will be judged, the day of judgment, is what? as -salam. because it is very important that's why if you go to hadith uh, uh, hadith 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 jibreel when the, the jibreel was asking the prophet sallam, what is islam the prophet sallam, said an tashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasulullah what was the second one uh -huh. as prayer 
Allah said in many places, wa aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Salat is something that if you act upon it and you command your family to do the same, Allah will be pleased with you. Allah said, wa kur fil kitab Ismail, inna wa kana sadiq al wadi wa kana rasul al nabiya wa kana yamur ahlahu bis salati wa zakati wa kana inda rabbihi mantiya. Allah was pleased with him because he used to pray and he used to command his family to pray. So this, listen, if Allah bless you with a family, make sure, let them love the prayer. Let them love the salah. If you command them, you put the love of salah in their hearts and they go up praying, Allah will be pleased with you. Because Allah said, Allah was pleased with Sayyidina Ismail because he used to command his family to pray. Pray. Inshallah, one day I will talk to you about the importance and the benefits of prayer. You will love it. If you, if you know it, believe me, you will never pray with, play with your prayer. So, Allah said we should pray. Right? I want someone please to give, I know, Alhamdulillah, we have many people who memorize the Quran here. I want somebody to read to me the ayah that says we should pray the whole four Rakah. Now, anyone, is there anyone here among the Hufad who tell me Allah said pray the whole four Rakah? Is there anyone here who will tell me that Allah said when you pray in the Holy, you should not recite loud? Nobody? Come on, are you guys who fight? Yeah. They happy. You can find it? What about Asr? No? So no ayah? So is there any ayah that says we should, can you recite any ayah that says we should pray Maghrib 3 Raka? Check on Google, maybe. <laughs> no? We don't have, right? Or any ayah that says that you should recite loud in, in the first surah of, of Maghrib? We don't have. So Allah said we should pray. How do we pray? Uh, sunnah, my brother. May Allah bless you, my brother. Sunnah. Sunnah. So can you do without Sunnah? No. You don't know how to worship your Lord except through what? The explanation of the one who the Quran was revealed to. Let me put it that way. You will never understand how to worship your Lord, how to please your Lord, how to please Allah, how to do what He wants, how to worship Him the way He wants to be worshipped except after following the one who it was revealed to. And who is that? Sahib al-Sunnah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Sunnah. is the second, as we say, primary what? Source of Islamic law. Because the Prophet said, listen, now he wants to teach us how to pray. Allah said, wa he said, he said, pray as you see me praying. You and I, Suleiman, did we see the Prophet Sallallahu We didn't see him, but subhanAllah, we pray that we see him, inshallah, in Jannah. Where do we learn how he prayed? We go to what? Sunnah. So if a person comes and, tell, and, and, and says, you know what, me, only Quran, how do you, only I'm looking for a word. It's, look, a clean. If, look, it will, it will not work. No. It is not true. It has to be an explanation of the sunnah. You went to Hajj. Some of you, alhamdulillah, you went to Hajj. You went to Umrah. Allah said, وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ Lillah. Allah commanded us to what? If we can, because he said in the hadith, the man is Ah. Now, how do you prefer, perform the Hajj rituals? How? We don't know. So, where did we learn how to perform the Hajj rituals? From the Sunnah. He said, Khudu anni manasikakum. 
So he taught us how to perform the Hajj rituals. And if you go, you don't perform it as he performed it, your Hajj will not be accepted. If you pray, for example, you come now, and you say, Quran said we should pray. And you keep praying. Without the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will it be accepted? Will it be accepted? It will, not, it will never be accepted. Why? Because you don't know how to do it. And Allah is not going to accept anything if it's not from Sayyidina Rasulullah. You have to know that. Listen, you see all the messengers that Allah SWT sent, at their time, during their time, if you do any action without their teachings, Allah is not going to accept it. Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاءَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ so during the time of Musa alayhi salam, the people at that time, if they perform any act of worship without the teaching of Musa, will Allah accept it? During the time of Ibrahim, if they people perform without his teachings, will Allah accept it? During the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, if people worship Allah not the way he worship, will it be accepted? Now this is the time of Muhammad Rasulullah. If you do any action, you say you are taking only you are taking only Quran. You don't care about the Sunnah. Allah is not going to accept it. So our aqidah is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jamaah. I want this to keep ringing in your ears. I I I I, I mean because I there's something I'm trying to to make you understand. And so wherever you go. And a topic is being raised, or maybe some of you read a lot, you go online. And also be careful on some of the sites that you guys visit, please. For the sake of Allah. Look, you need the tools before you are able to research. When I say the tools, that means you need the foundation. Without foundation, a building will collapse. Without these walls, this building will not stand. So before a person goes in these websites researching, uh, you have to make sure you have the tools. You have the foundation. So when you see something, it will not you know, confuse you. Otherwise, if, if your foundation is not strong enough, you will end up going astray. You love to read. Yes, but please seek the tools. And inshallah, when you go to the operation room, you know how to use all your tools. But if you don't, you will become like a leaf blowing by the air everywhere. When the air comes, it blows it that way, it goes. It blows it this way it goes. Be playing with your mind. But if you know you have a foundation, whatever you read, you know how to how to filter. If I may use that word, you know how to filter whatever thing it is and to remove the good out of it and throw away what? Well. Yes, the bad. So let's be careful. Always be careful what you read. The sites you visit, seeking Islamic knowledge. Who wrote that thing? What was his hakila? Do you know who he is? Or you know who he was? You have to know before reading anything and trying to apply it to your worship, your deen. We have to be careful, please. I know because one, two, three, we go to Google. One, two, three, we go to Google. It's good. Because we want to learn. What are we? We are seekers of knowledge. And we are looking what? Uh, we're looking for Dalil. At Ba'ud Dalil. Right? We follow Dalil. We want proof. But that proof has to be Quran and what? Sunnah. And I told you later, I will add one for Al Ijma. Okay? Quran and, and Sunnah. So, for example, Allah said we should give zakah. We should give zakah. We know zakah. We should give zakah. So if you have $200, you 
You save two hundred dollars for a year. You give zakah. So how will you know how to give zakah? How much? From the sunnah. So if you understand this introduction of this topic, you know that there's no way you will act upon the Quran alone without the sunnah. We must follow the Quran and the sunnah to have a good understanding, to worship Allah the way He wants to be worshipped. Otherwise, you will be doing something thinking that you are impressed or you are, but at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want it. وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ Ah. You acted, you did a lot of work and you go. Let me give you an example. To give you the importance of following the sunnah. Who heard about the, uh, uh, this Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman Ibn Fodi? No. Anyone? Sheikh Uthman Ibn Fodi. Mm. No? Okay. One of the greatest imams and Islamic leaders that Africa ever the whole world seekers of knowledge if you are a seeker of knowledge and you are seeking knowledge you will know about him I was reading one of his book he was talking about Sunnah and he brought he said a man, the day of judgment, he had, he, they were checking the deeds of those, you know the prophet said when you finish praying, he said, SubhanAllah, 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 how many times? But he was in over. Doesn't mean you should not do the dhikr, no. You see, we have a dhikr that, that one the prophet gave the amount to do, there are some other people also that as well. You can do as much as you want. So, what happened? They were calling those who said the uh, the tasbih subhanallah, 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 three, thirty-three times. When he came, they told him, "No, we want those who said thirty-three times. We want those who was. We are calling those who said what thirty-three times. What is this telling you? Obeying what? That's what that. But it doesn't mean you should not do dhikr or countable. You do it. Okay? But the one after prayer that the prophet said, say 33, that one, 33. Don't say the prophet say after prayer 33 and me, I'm going to say 100. Say 100, but not the one after the prayer. Okay? When you are walking, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Say it a million times. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illa Allah akbar, Allah akbar. Allah said, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا If Allah says كَثِيرًا Do you know how much? A lot! So as much as you can because dhikr, remembrance of Allah, purifies your, your heart. And it gives it sakina, the tranquility, the comfort, and the happiness that it needs. So now, we understand now, brothers, with the proof of Quran. Quran proved Sunnah. Quran proved Sunnah. This is part one of this topic. I think now, Alhamdulillah, you know where we are going. And you know who you are. You know your Aqeedah. Is the Aqeedah of who? Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. What I do, I follow the Quran and the and the sunnah. This is my aqidah. And do you know that's the aqidah of all the four school of thought? The Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmed. All of them. They all tell you, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثِ فَهُوَ مَذْهَبِي All of them they tell you, if hadith is found to be authentic, that is my madhab. That's my school. That's what I follow. Because, brothers and sisters, 
if you go to Allah without the Prophet Muhammad, Allah will not accept you. If you go to Allah, now, 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 the time of the Prophet Muhammad, if you go to Allah without the Prophet Muhammad, Allah will not accept you. وَضَمَّ الْإِلَاهُ اسْمَ النَّبِيِّ إِلَى اسْمِهِ إِذَا قَالَ فِي الْخَمْسِ الْمُؤَذِّرُ أَشْحَرُ When you hear لا إله إلا الله what comes next? محمد رسول الله So there's no way you can please Allah without obeying the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم And let me conclude with this ayah in Surah Muhammad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh, you will believe. Ati'u Allah. Obey Allah. Wa ati'u Rasula. And obey the messenger. Wa la tubutilu a'malakum. And do not spoil your deeds. You understand this ayah? Meaning, obey Allah. And obey the messenger. And do not spoil your what? Deeds. Meaning, if you don't obey Allah and his messenger, your deeds will be what? That's it. It is understood. Kalam jaleel. Alhamdulillah. نكتفي بهذا إن شاء الله إلى أسبوع القادم إن قدر الله لنا البقاء we stop here إن شاء الله and uh, the next move الحمد لله may Allah سبحانه وتعالى give us complete understanding deep understanding of the deen and may Allah سبحانه وتعالى be pleased with us may Allah make things easy for us